Hello everyone and welcome to my little corner of the internet. My name's Michael and I'm bitten by a radioactive book. 2016 has already started, so what's left from last year? Oh yeah, my December wrap up. I've read seven books I think in uh, December, so let's get started. First off, we have The Crystal Cape by Mary Stewart. It's the first installment in her Arthurian saga. It's a first-person point-of-view book, um, mainly focused on Merlin. And uh, we see Merlin as a child growing up, uh, coming into his magic. It has some elements, I say that very hesitantly, some elements of like um, Patrick Rothfuss's um, quoth story because we actually see that a lot of the magic that Merlin has is some kind of trickery perception uh, stuff like that that is then really well retold um, so the magical elements um, or the fantastical elements are they are there and existent but they are very very light and so we have more of a coming of age story and if you like uh, detract that it is supposed to be an Arthurian retelling then it is a very I'd say ordinary uh, coming of age story from plots and characters what really speaks for the book is the writing itself the writing is really really good the writing is maybe a 4.5 star writing maybe a 5 star writing uh, but uh, the the rest of, of the book was not that engaging um, for me so I, I had a good time I enjoyed myself but it was more of a three star read uh, than something spectacular Next up we have A Cavern of Black Ice by J.V. Jones, the first installment in her Sword of Shadows series. This one uh, was really really engaging and the element that stood out the most for me was the atmosphere. Because uh, from, from a world po building point of view we, are, we have a setting that is set in the far north set in a setting I did it again I, I always do that okay let's leave it like uh, uh, at that um, uh, we, we have the the setting in uh, in the far north and uh, so the atmosphere is like very cold and um, I seldomly had a book capture that atmosphere it's really like every page is pouring out the ice and snow and so uh, you get a high level of immersion into the book and that is something I, I really in, enjoyed. We follow a couple of characters, mainly um, two characters, one male character who is um, like part of a clan based society in the north, then one female character who is kind of kept in uh, in a fortress, in a more city-like environment uh, and how their path cross and how other characters are involved in is of course for you to find out. It was a really really engaging read, a really good start to an epic fantasy series with a yeah unique setting and therefore I rated it 4 out of 5 stars. Next up we have Changeless, the second installment in Gag Carriger's Parasol Protectorate series. We are following uh, Alexia Tarabotti and Lord Macken again. Uh, this time uh, they have like a mysterious case to solve uh, where suddenly uh, the supernatural creatures of London lose their supernatural abilities so they're like humanized uh, for, for a while and then that moves away and um, moves to an another place um, to Scotland and so they follow um, that mysterious um, yeah happening uh, or that mysterious event of, of uh, desupernaturalization is that a word? Let's make it one. Um, yeah, and as always, um, Gay Carriger's books are filled with a lot of humor. I really enjoyed myself. It's it's a light read. It uh, was more about the, um, the 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 steampunk elements or like the supernatural elements, and a little bit less about the romance elements uh, than the first book was. Um, so there, there was a slight shift uh, I felt here, but there are still like romance uh, elements in it, um, but they don't like distract you from from the main plot. So overall, as always with Gay Character, a really really enjoyable and fun short read, um, and I rated it four out of five stars.
Then I wanted to get into a little bit of middle grade, so I read the I read the Inventor's Secret by Chad Morris. It's the first installment in his Crackbridge Hall series. Um, we're following two main characters uh, who are siblings. Uh, they are twins, one boy and a girl, and they go to the Crackbridge Hall school, which is like the most, uh, yeah, or the, the best school in the country. This is set in the future in, I think, 2048. And uh, their grandfather father is at actually the founder of the school and invented something which is called the bridge, where uh, like events from the past can can be transported like into the classroom. So the class can like watch um, elements of the uh, of the past right as if they were in the past and yeah then suddenly uh, the grandfather is kidnapped and the kids have to find out why and of course to bring him back. Uh, for a middle grade a book that was really enjoyable uh, I had some other like opinion or not opinion um, expectations uh, of the book uh, before going into it um, so it wasn't what I thought it would be so um, overall I, I won't say I was disappointed. I was uh, I was enjoying myself, um, but not one of the best books I've read um, this year. Let's let's put it like that. Uh, it's still got three stars. I'm thinking about continuing with the series. I'm not sure, but yeah, if you're looking for something else for another middle grade series that maybe not as big as other series out there, uh, that might be a thing to yeah uh, pick up. Next up, I finished Scarlet Tides, the second installment in David Hare's Moon Tide Quartet series. Um, I think I talked about um, the third book uh, in my TBR yesterday. So uh, just briefly, two continents, one more Middle Eastern uh, Indian culture, the other one uh, medieval European culture. They are connected by a bridge and uh, the bridge can only be traveled for I think one year every 12 years or something like that um, because there are the tides, the moon tides uh, that uh, fill the bridge with water otherwise and so we have like every 12 years there's a crusade happening from the European country uh, or the European continent to the others. Uh, it's far more complex than this because uh, each of the continents has various different kind of states with various different kind of agendas. We are following a, uh, following a plethora of, of characters from both sides of the conflict so it's very very interesting. There are a lot of younger protagonists in their like uh, late teens so I think that is like a very good series for people that read mainly uh, YA and want to um, get into adult fantasy because this is definitely an adult fantasy with adult themes, uh, themes but due to the accessibility of many of the main characters I think uh, a lot of YA readers uh, could give this a try if they want to branch out into an epic fantasy series that is not as well known but might be a good yeah like portal uh, between the two subgenres. And the second installment was also very enjoyable. Uh, I rated it four stars and yeah, look forward to like finish the series at the start of the year. Next up, I finished Prince of Fools, which is the first installment in Mark Lawrence's second trilogy, the Red Queen's War trilogy. It's also set in um, the world that he introduced in his Broken Empire series, but we have another main protagonist called Jalan and he is a prince and he is kind of like yeah, a, a lazy bum uh, you could say uh, good with words good with women but not good with other stuff and uh, he gets connected to um, a viking warrior and they have to go on like a journey or on a quest together because they are magically bound to each other um, and it it had quite a different feel. It's a bit more light-hearted than the Broken Empire trilogy. Um, it reminded me a lot of Prince of Thorns, not in like the the, the grim dark detail of it, but in the writing. Because uh, what was 
really strange for me is that uh, Mark Lawrence's first book, The um, Prince of Thorns, is like more, uh, uh, I, I don't want to say plainly written, but yeah, more in, in your face. And then with the second and third installment in the series, he got into way more like lyrical writing. And, um, and I think the writing did really a step up. And now for some reason, uh, he stepped down a bit. Um, that was, uh, I don't know if that is just his like, uh, like mood of writing, like easing the reader into the new series, uh, introducing the characters and then stepping up. I haven't read the second book. Uh, so far, but um, yeah, um, I also read somewhere that the series was a little bit more catered towards a YA audience uh, to integrate maybe more uh, readers of um, um, or more younger readers than the, the first trilogy attracted. I don't know if that is uh, if that is true or if that was the aim, um, but uh, yeah, it. You can feel it a little bit in, in the writing. So uh, overall, I enjoyed it, uh, but I rated it three stars. I think same as Prince of Thorns when I originally read it. Um, and I hope that um, the, the two remaining books, the second is already out, the third comes out this year, uh, will have a step up in writing again. And last but not least, I've read Traitor's Blades, uh, the first installment in Sebastian de Castell's Great Code series. Um, this was, I think, my favorite read of the month. It um, has like a, a feeling, um, a bit of uh, the Three Musketeers set in a fantasy world, because we have um, Falcio and his uh, two friends, Cast and Brusty, and they are great codes, and the great codes were like the yeah law giving magisters of the um, of the late king, and uh, they traveled around and uh, spoke law in towns and villages and kept the roads safe. And they were like the dream that the king had for his kind of law system. And now the king is brought down by the dukes. Um, and uh, the dukes are ruling the land and uh, the great coats have been disbanded and branded traitors and so yeah they're, they're traveling around uh, the country doing mercenary uh, work or bodyguard work and um, yeah right at the beginning of the uh, novel they, they are uh, implicated in a, in a murder and so they yeah want to find out uh, who actually uh, did the deed and uh, fulfill their, their quests uh, to to the old king and it had a very great mix of, of action of banter of very emotional uh, scenes that is not like um, um, a book without mature themes um, so it, it the mix-up was really really well done so it was probably like a, a four and a half star read for me not not a total five but uh, yeah a, a really really good book and I I buddy read this with uh, Shay from Shay Adventure and we both uh, really enjoyed it and I'm sure we're uh, reading the second book, uh, The Night Shadow, I think it's called, together uh, in the future, and the third book in the series um, comes out later this year, so I'm really looking forward to this, and it was a really, really good book. So, these were all the books I managed to finish in December. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of me, subscribe to my channel, and until next time, I hope you get bitten by a really good book, too. Bye!